All right, welcome back to the Pumpernickel Podcast. Pumpernickel! We back. Um, so, I guess we'll start it off like we always started off. Uh, my name is Elvin. I'm Nathaniel. Eddie. White Mike. Black Mike. There it is. And um, I will just jump into some bullshit, I it, guess. It, it, Eddie's got a uh, starter topic, I believe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was uh, my favorite murder mystery. I listened to this podcast at work yesterday. And... Uh, they they received letters from like their listeners and a, one listener in particular said that she's a she's like a hooker and she got you know she sex got, worker she got picked yeah. up one night yeah. and the guy takes her back starts off as a normal night two glasses of wine everything's cool and then all of a sudden he says can you put something on for me and it's like she's a little bit like well what is it because she's not he's not showing he's like pulls out a stethoscope and she's like sure I'll put on a stethoscope. And then she goes, do you want to have sex now? You know, like, try to engage. Yeah. And he's like, no, no, just listen to my heart. So he puts the telescope on his heart. And then he stops and says, I'll pay you 200 extra dollars if you just listen to your own heart. And I sit there and watch you. And the chick said yes, gets $200, leaves and says she's never coming back. Fair. Uh, and I asked the guys here today, is like, would you do that? Would you have someone, like, give you a telescope, listen to your own heart, get paid $200? Because my response initially was off rip, yes. Question A, when I listen to his heart, does he have a heartbeat? Yes, he does. He's not a vampire. Okay. <laughs> That's important. Yeah, yeah. He has, he has, he has a heartbeat. There's no heartbeat, yeah. <laughs> we get scooting. Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear my heartbeat? Yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. You put your uh, stethoscope against his chest and you're a piano man play. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have a good night. <laughs> this has been yeah. fun. My response was yes off rip. My coworker at the time, she was, she was a female, and she asked me uh, if I would do it, and I'd be like, I was yes. Because I'm, I'm a pretty big guy, and I feel like even if there was a bigger guy, I could wrestle my way up, right? Jump and get out of here. But I don't know what the idea, like the perspective for a woman is. So when I, when I go to listen to my own heart, is he just staring at me, or is he like, start, I'm is assuming, he jerking? I'm assuming he's jerking off. I'm assuming that's what was missing in this. I part. didn't know that that part was a part of this question. Yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna start changing the dynamic, and that's pretty hard. <laughs> that's a very. Uh, I was just saying, you get paid two hundred extra dollars to just like listen to your own heartbeat of the guy like. Go so if I pay you two hundred dollars, you'd watch me jerk him off. Is that what we're going on here? Because that's weird. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have to watch you. Like, maybe well, he, the guy's in the room, but I can't look up at the ceiling. The idea no. was for me to listen to my own heart. What if I just close my eyes? Well, maybe that's yeah. Me. That's a dangerous move. <laughs> I don't think you want to be in a room with a man jerking off with your eyes closed. You want to look at him in your peripheral is what you want. So you can sense movement. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, you don't actually see it. Kind of like Elvis got it. Right, right, right. Yeah, so yeah. You keep, a, you keep a nice, but that's a very fine line. Like, you're <laughs> towing a very fine line with that one. You know what? I probably like, because I have glasses, so I probably like look down so I can see the bulk. And if he makes any movement towards me, then it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's going on? Like real slow. Whoa, 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 whoa. Put that away. <laughs> We're done here. Like, like, walks like, out the room. That's a goddamn penis. <laughs> yeah, Damn. Damn. Put your goddamn cock away. <laughs> yeah, uh, I guess I didn't really ponder it that deep my first time. All I thought was, yeah, I would listen to my own heart. Who cares? But now that I'm here, it's kind of the full scenario Well, yeah, it's just a sex here. worker, and this is what's going on. Like, and she's getting caught by surprise. So, like... Yeah, I totally was, understand like why she would say no again because it is creepy. Like it is a very unusual request, and so. But like that's the thing I've also heard too about prostitution is that a lot of times it's not sex involved. A lot of times people who ask for uh, like for want them company it, or want want company, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it, it, I guess it makes total sense that she would expect him to want something intimate that wasn't necessarily sex. But I guess it's also weird to have somebody recognize their own mortality. But I guess when you're surrounded by well, bodies all the time, well, something the like that is unique. After, after yeah. she leaves, she Googles the guy, finds out that he's a mortician. Right, and then it all adds up. Yeah. So that changes things. Yeah, now yeah. we're talking about a guy who has an unnatural like, work environment, right? Right. working with dead bodies. So obviously he now has weird sexual tendencies. So which raised my question of, couldn't you be a mortician and not have unusual sexual or whatever tendency? Like a regular person... Which is a super weird job. I think you could. A lot of people are. I think you yeah, could. But it's I think normal. You can also be the case where you are weird, have weird tendencies, but you're a good guy. It's a very lonely job, too. You spend a lot of time in silence. And so... Well, yeah, hopefully... I would hope so. I mean, I, I guess you listen to music while you do <laughs> stuff, but at the same time, it's like, oh, pot, hey, you listen to, to the Pumpernickel podcast while you cut uh-huh. over somebody's body. 
Nice plug. No, I hope I'm not. Ninety percent of our fan base is morticians. <laughs> Shit. I run the numbers. It's like, yeah, we're all morticians. Hey man, uh, get those numbers where you can. Whatever. Yeah. yeah whatever. Guess keep on stuff. listening. Like yeah. no bullshit though. Like um. <laughs> this message brought to you by embalming fluid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ancient I, Egyptians. The ancient Egyptians approved. I actually thought about being a mortician. Whoa. Uh, that fits. Uh, when like I was a little younger, just because like. It's a good job. It is a good job. Like how so? Well, it's it's well, highly well. stable, pays well. Yeah, does I mean, it pay well? Yeah, there's, there's always work. work. Yeah, there's always work. You'll never be without work. <laughs> so it's like maybe work's gonna increase. Right. <laughs> well, what, what is pays well? Is it, do you, okay, no, no, I'm, not, I'm not making a funny joke. Do you get paid by the body? No, no, I think you get no, paid no, by the hour. You get paid by the hour, but I think you're making like six figures. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah nobody can. wants to wrangle dead bodies. Yeah. Like it's a very um, like most people are like grossed out by. Right. Like, yeah. There are some like, people that can't even look at blood. So I mean. Right. Like, so the last thing somebody wants to see is somebody in rigor mortis. Yeah. yeah. Decomposing. Yeah. You yeah. gotta you gotta clean the body. You gotta like drain mm-hmm. the blood, drain liquid, get organs out. Like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the real question is, who's the guy driving the organ juice bus? This is probably just a where disposal does, unit. Where does all that go? I think it's like a containment, like how you have like a biohazard containment for like hospitals and stuff where they pull that stuff out. What's that delivery service like DHL or something? <laughs> <laughs> you send them body parts out by DHL. And then like the yellow van, you just see like those like cameras where they just like throw in boxes. <laughs> yeah. On the doorstep. They throw in bodies. You just hear like a <laughs> That box looks think, soggy. Oh, is that my new kid? Hey, do you think he's like spoiled? Well, not to minimize anybody's like losses, but aren't there like creepy morticians that are bad people? Because just like they're good ones and normal people oh, God. that are probably like selling spoiled organs. Oh, they absolutely are. Oh yeah, to the black market. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, but also, what the hell do you do with a spoiled organ? People, well, people, they, they, they'll know. They won't know. That's what I'm saying. Oh, you're saying like, but there's a very visible difference between a living organ and a dead one. Yeah. Yeah, but like when you're dealing, like when you're dealing in illegal operations, like I don't know if you got the. I guess. They're gonna show you the. Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna be like, oh, so you're here for a kidney replacement. Right. We'll show you our finest stock. Like, That's true, no. But black market like, ain't no dummies. No, there's like, some people in the back like, I'll give me that bag full of organs, and they just walk off. There'll be a check. No, 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 well, yeah, obviously, yeah. I think, no, like you as the surgeon that does illegal kidney operations, uh-huh. I'll show you these spoiled kidneys. But obviously, you're not gonna pay me like what you would pay for like a healthy organ. Because right. you're, you're doing, you know, you're but doing you're the only one who would know, right? I'd right. imagine it's almost. But you would know, and your patient wouldn't. You True. Know what I mean? But I also would imagine it'd be even more dangerous, right? Because it's black market, so like there they is no sue. law. They're not suing. So if something goes wrong, why not kill you? But if like, you get a, a fucked up kidney, you ain't gonna be alive anyways. True, but somebody has to buy that from the source, and then they sell that most likely to the per- like to someone. That's who's what we're saying. Yeah, that's what we're saying. Like. Just like you would sell, like... Oh, so you're saying, like, somebody's just buying it from them and then immediately sewing it into some random dude? Right, yes. so fuck it. Why would that be a good idea? Because you get the money from the, the money. surgery. I guess. And they're not suing you. Like, you just dead. And they died, oh, the surgery didn't work. I guess, maybe. I mean, it seems like that's a big trail to leave behind. Though. Also, I'm oddly picturing these kidneys being sold on wax paper on like a steak. I don't know, dude. Like, I'm just assuming things, man. Like, I don't, I don't and know. And then that dude who works. dies goes back to that same mortician. Like, and so they take very, that same organ out of the body. This took a very dire there. turn, but I'm just saying, I think. Yeah, we went down a dark path. I think some of these people could, like, you know what I mean, stretch out. I mean, there. there could be a business to business relationship. Hey, could y'all bring the air down a little bit? It's like a slave ship in this bit. There's only two black people, though. Mike's, Mike's oh, working on it right now. He's got it. Appreciate you. Um. I'll see why not. I don't know. I don't know how all that operates. Yeah, well, I do hopefully it. you never do. It. Yeah, I guess right. I'm not very well versed in the uh, black market organ sales. Organ donations. Or I know it's a big sales. thing, though. They're cracking down on people in, like, here, you know, because it's just less the people who require it. They can't yeah, get well, well, I mean, like, there's, there are people that, like, I mean, like, the list for getting an organ is forever long. So if you've got enough money to be like, fuck it, I don't want to wait on the list. There's somebody out there that'll be like, yeah, throw me enough money and I'll fucking... And even then, like, if you have enough money, I feel like you could hire, like, those medical doctors and scientists who will just grow you a kidney. I'm, like, cutting-edge research shit. Just 3D print me a kidney? <laughs> Basically. Damn, I got grow the wires grow mixed up. Like some rat grow mixed the blue and the red? Jeez. It's just like little rats that are growing little ears and different organs, you know? How fucked up is that? You got a whole human ear growing on your back to be harvested for somebody's head? Hey. Nah, dog, I'm good. Well, what if they don't hit the rat off? Now you got rat ear. They just put a whole rat where the ear is. 
We still have the wrong part on. The rat whispers what he heard into your ear. <laughs> no. <laughs> to your ear holes. <laughs> Hey, I don't speak human, but I think they said squeak, squeak, double squeak, three squeaks in a squeak. <laughs> You're next, Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Does that rat with a giant human ear on his back have super hearing for a rat? There's no way. That, no, that, it's not. That organ's not hearing. set up. Yeah, it's not gonna make <laughs> the ear bone's connected to the spine. <laughs> bone? <laughs> spine bone. Does it get to your wax? Oh. Now that's, that's a solid that's, question. That's the question. Does this ear get to your wax? I guess it does not. Does it get rat earwax or human earwax? I think it's human earwax, right? Is there a difference? I don't know. There's a, I, I'm just saying rat the, What's the point percentage difference between rat DNA and human DNA? That's the difference. Probably. Chuck E. Cheese, we've got to ask an important question. What you, ch- ch- <laughs> Chuck Entertainment Cheese? That is his middle name? You Google a lot of them. I never get on the Reddit set. Yeah. Start, start asking the Reddits and the questions. Dive deep into those black holes. Of- Bro, we're going on a weird path. Let's get on some yeah. other questions. Well, let's jump. So that we don't should. bore the hell out of it. Yeah. <laughs> this, it, this is hard hitting stuff. <laughs> well, needless to say, people are weird, not necessarily bad, not necessarily good. Mm-hmm. That's the weird stuff out there. And you could be a person with a very peculiar job, like a mortician, and, and be normal. normal. And be a regular dude. Right. Most of them are. And just because you have weird fetishes probably. doesn't mean you're a bad person. You just have weird fetishes. Quick side note, though, call out to last episode uh, about the deaf and disabled people and so forth. Right, right. We discussed the different sign languages and different languages. Right. Turns out there's different Braille in different languages. Oh, yeah. They would have that's, course, that's complicated yeah. as fuck. Uh, yeah. Because yeah. we met, we suddenly missed that one. So Russian Braille is not the same as English Braille. But yeah, I mean, like, you're writing Braille for, like, your own language. Like... Yeah, but I'm surprised that... Deaf and blind people have it unified to make like a super thing. I guess you could, really couldn't just speak different languages. Yeah. You'd have like a blind language. It's yeah, and it's, well, it's not the, just the, like the, a the language. language. It's not just like a language, like a translation of another language. It's yeah. like they're, they're entirely independent ideas. Like you express things completely differently in a lot of languages. So could blind people have their own language? Yeah, but it would all. I mean, you could. We could have our own language. We could make our own language. I mean, have you heard, have you yeah. heard us talk? We kind of do. I mean, yeah. In a way, in a weird way, English has dialects. Like people speak differently depending on where you go. Oh, yeah. So it's different. Do you think eventually there's just one language? Probably. I think it'll be a world like wild calamity where a lot of people die, and then eventually we all kind of uni- those people left will unify and they'll make. What do we stop language and just send like? Telepathy, like telepo- like telepathy. telepathy. Yeah, start like sending messages via brain. You know how far away we are from some shit like that. Like dumb. four or five weeks. Humans started out with one language. Oh. Ugh. And then it just kind of branched out from there, so it's not gonna go back. Why? No. And if it does, it'll just branch out again. It probably could come back. Why not? Oscillations. No, with like things repeating over and over all the time. Order. That's what I, that's what I'm saying. It's like some yeah. drastic calamity where a lot of us get killed off. Yeah, because it only started off with one language because you just there wasn't enough humans to have like the right. need for multiple languages. And there wasn't enough ideas to need to express. Right. It's like all I needed was food, shelter, and grog. Yeah, grog. the difference is just because it's convenience and location. Everybody got spread out. But like, right, right. But uh, yeah. I think just keep on recycling. And repeating. Mm-hmm. Any new questions? Uh, I'm still so fascinated by the uh, multiple braille, multiple sign language thing. Um, However, so now that Eddie is here, we can revisit the henchman conversation, which I will apologize once again, got cut off in our previous episodes. Yeah. So the, the question is, how do you become a henchman or a lackey, and or how do you recruit henchmen and or lackeys? Like, how, how do you get into the henchman game? Well, so like... Most of the time, you obviously you're not just like putting out a resume like, "Hey man, I'm trying to be a henchman." Uh, <laughs> you typically Peter our like, henchman. <laughs> <laughs> I thought henchman got chosen because of uh, like because they see like an alpha, right, and you like gravitate towards them, or like there's someone that's like smart enough to like tell you what to do, and you just do it. Because I don't know, because by definition, I don't think henchmen are actively looking for the best henching positions. Well, I mean, well, once you once you become a henchman, if you if you like become like low tier henchman, some people are ambitious and they start looking for like how top. do I yeah how do I become top hench right? Um, but the natural progression of business, you want to upgrade your hench status. Yeah, because yeah. you don't want your henchman to be too bright. Well, you well, gotta have it depends. Like it like there you you gotta have you gotta have somebody to uh, uh, delegate. delegate. That's the word I'm thinking. Yeah. 
Um, because like you're not trying to do everything if you know if you so got. So what's the definition of a henchman? Basically, like a toady. See, because henchmen to me are like disposable pawns. They're not your knights. They're not your rooks. They're not your bishops. I think it's everything in between. Yeah, like yeah, faithful follower or supporter. So it's really all. So it's all of those guys. It's yeah, all, everybody it's all below tiers. you. That's not like uh, general level. Yeah, is 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 a henchman. It's like, hey, like... Well, it's just like working for a big corporation. Like, if you're just... Kind of. You're just, you're just a henchman to the big... Yeah, I mean, you, you got your foot soldiers, then you got your captains, then you actually got the co-captains, then you got, like, some generals, then you got, like, your little buddy helping you out, if you're the, if you're right, the main like dude. Partners or... Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I think most henchmen, like, typically start out by, like, oh, man, like, uh, like you said a second ago, like, seeing somebody that's, like, shot calling, and it's just like, I want to follow this guy, because he seems like he knows what he's doing. And he's like, all right, cool, you know, I could use an extra pair of hands. And then he's like, you know, hey, go, you know, do X, Y, and Z. And then, you know, I'll pay you this much to do it. And then they, before they realize it, they're a henchman. Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, that just becomes what they are. And, like, I mean, they might have other normal jobs. Like, they might have a nine to five. But it's just like, when I'm not doing my normal stuff, I'm out here, like, hinging. Hinging. <laughs> Massage hinge. Professional hinge. Right. And again, with this hinging business, are we talking, like, Fictitious henchmen or like real life henchmen? Real life henchmen. Yeah, real life henchmen. Like drug dealers got henchmen. Because by your definition, it doesn't have to be illegal. Or yeah, it doesn't have to be illicit, illicil- 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 organization. But like, no, but typically that's kind of where I'm leaning. Well, that's where I'm leaning as well. Because cartoon wise, cartoons have taught me that henchmen do illegal activities. <laughs> I mean, t- technically, you know, you're right. A business, if you're a lower tier, you are a henchman. Right. Yeah. I would but, consider myself a henchman. I'm, I, yeah, I think we all are. Yeah, but I'm, I'm thinking more outside of business, everything else, legal or illegal. Right, that's what I'm saying. But typically, I associate henchmen with like illegal activity. Yeah, like the, like the guy, the video you showed me of the dude popping the president in Mexico. Yeah, probably a henchman. No, he's for sure a henchman. Yeah, well, that's definitely that's a low tier henchman too. Correct. Yeah, that ain't nobody higher up. <laughs> that ain't no CEO. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> No, you know, you, you as a CEO, you don't roll around popping people. Yeah, you don't shoot anybody. Yeah, that's that's the buck private. Yeah, the cleanest hands go up. Correct. Up the, up the ladder. Yeah, everybody's got their place. So yeah, like, e- like even, even if you did see this quote-unquote alpha doing something, that's a weird thing to kind of get into. Like, you just follow this person like a little subordinate? Well, well it's the money thing, right? Like you well, were saying. Well, one, there's money, but two, like, um, typically, like, the whoever's, like, at the top um, that you choose to follow is not someone that's random like you're not seeing some like stranger on the street like oh man like that guy looks like he's got his shit together i'm gonna go follow him it's it's usually somebody that you know that you have met that you like interacted with on a personal level that you see like oh man like i went to i went to high school with billy and then you know like a couple years later billy's out here and fucking uh, like a tesla slinging coat you know whatever and it's just like damn like yeah we used to play on the same football team billy was a quarterback yeah, yeah and it's like, like hey billy how you get all this money and billy's just like hey man you know i did you know x y and z and you know, I, can, I can pull you into the fold like, right, man, yeah and <laughs> now you're a henchman <laughs> See, i think that's true only at the higher topper hench level i think at the lower hench level because like when you're top hench yeah i think you're the hench recruiter too I think, I think you've taken over the recruitment process and the main guy isn't doing that much anymore. Yeah, that's true. The main guy, like, the main guy, like, once you get, like, top, top, the main guy is pretty far removed. Like, they understand the plans and they're delegating to... But no direct of, actions. Yeah, a couple of the, like, the top hinges they're delegating, uh, top hinges they're delegating to, but they're not doing anything. Because Correct. they got to keep their hands clean. I think we're overthinking it, too. It's just a company. That's literally all it is. Like, it's... It's starting. It's a uh, uh, starting up is a henchman. Like henchman, I imagine is just like a startup. You have an idea. You go for it yourself at first. You get money from it. Some more money from it. Blah blah blah. Then you get enough money to hire somebody to help. That person gets involved. They invest their time, their energy. They get better ideas. And as you work your way up, you get more money. You recruit more. You pump more money back into the system. And then people, more and more people add themselves on. It's a but, snowball effect. I don't think the, it's that major. Does yeah. the illegality of it change that dynamic? You, it's probably not. It's probably the same. If anything, it might be more so because it probably, if you're in the dark side of shit, it's probably, money probably flows quicker, I'd imagine. Mm, yeah. Than the other way around. So you probably can get more men faster 
then well, you can. Well, that's why you get into illegal activities. Right, it's because the money is faster, yeah. yeah it's because the money is more liquid. Yeah, right, right, It's right. also like watching evolution in fast time. Yeah, it, because it's, forward. It's, it's essentially an organism. Like, that's all it is, is like you start off with one, and then it multiplies and multiplies until it becomes one mm-hmm. mass of a thing. It's the same yeah, because it's like easy come, easy go. Like, you know what you get into right. illegal activity. Like, and then like you henchmen... You get paid the money because of the risk. Right. Henchmen aren't like... I mean, some are mindless idiots, but for the most part, it's just like when you go to your job, like, or like, you're not, you're not a slave to the system. Hell, you don't even, I'm sure half of us don't even believe in our system of our company. You just there because of the check and it keeps you off the street. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's why you're there. Cause you, if it were free and I, all your expenses were covered somewhere else, you wouldn't be there. You were 100% right. right. So it's like, so <laughs> yeah. exactly. You're only there because of the money. And it's the same thing I imagine with henching, like even with quote unquote henching in like poor neighborhoods where like kids are pulled into gang activity and all that stuff. It's not because the kids are mindlessly like, oh, I love the way this is. It's like, no, this nigga got money. This is the only way I've ever seen money get got. So I'm gonna do this. Get. Yeah, and I gotta get money. Being like I'm just gonna do this. Or I'm gonna die. Or exactly, or but it was it was gonna be for them in their head, it's, it was gonna be death either way. So it's like I might as well do it while I'm pursuing money as opposed to not. So. I might as well enjoy the ride. Right, okay. right. Enjoy the ride or might as well do the one that gives me the better odds of getting paid. And so it's it's no different. Same thing, yeah. yeah. But are there some people who just hench for the enjoyment of henching? Yeah, nigga, of course. There's people it's who love their yeah. work. People, yeah. people, yeah. people, not necessarily psychopaths, there's people who enjoy doing bad things. They're also psychopaths. <laughs> <laughs> like some people, yeah, some people like bashing the niggas' domes. I'd have done this for free. Like, yeah, like there's some different <laughs> people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, of course. Like, you think gangs, you think them MS-13 gangs and stuff like that, they ain't a ha- like you, a lot of them in there because they just like bashing in domes? Of course. Yeah, some of them just got promoted. They didn't want the yeah. promotion. Yeah, I wasn't even here for the check. I didn't know there was a check until late. <laughs> yeah. So off of that, I'm looking at now like the older school, like James Bond villains. Like, what was it like to be a kid when you were Jaws or Odd Job? Like, that dude had metal teeth, and Odd Job would throw a hat through a statue. Nigga was hard life. <laughs> but what was that childhood like? That's why you became it. That's why they. Uh... Right, exactly, because life was hard. Yeah. Nobody, nobody is becoming a henchman whose parents have like a four hundred one k, and yeah, they're like, yeah. it's, it's it's just not like. Could you imagine, I don't could think you that's imagine growing up in public school with metal teeth though? Not like braces, right? like actual metal teeth. Well, you better learn to throw hands. <laughs> well, he was like seven foot tall. Right, you better get it right. Yeah, and if, yeah, something if people learn not to mess with you if you act a certain way, so it's like people would probably mess with them until they bit that first kid. Yeah, that's, that's, you gotta you gotta set that example. You bite into that nigga like the Apple logo, y'all <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah, cause you got melted. He's taking whatever he's biting. Yeah, take a bite out of crime and leave. Oh, he took his whole shoulder with that bite. Yep. See, I prefer a metal jaw over metal teeth because I wouldn't want to like bite someone, rip the skin, blood. Nah, I'm good. What do you do with a metal jaw? Just have someone try to rock you and break their fish. But it's still connected the same way. Well, a lot of that energy might get dissipated though. You hear somebody in the jaw, they got a metal jaw. It's like, yeah, they, it may knock them out, but at the same time, it's like, you're going to hurt a lot worse. Oh, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you're breaking that head. You're breaking that head. But it's going to ring in your head like a church bell. Sanctuary! Um, yeah, so let me see what I can find, because I just found something on the Ask Reddit that I, I mean, was interesting. I got, I'm not trying to picture an odd job as like a four-year-old kid wearing a tuxedo and a bowler <laughs> in, <laughs> in school trying to learn English or, you know, algebra. Yeah, man. Or like, like what were we talking about last time? The uh, Koopa Troopa. The Koopa oh, actually, dude, talking about henchmen and that legal activity. And I know we may talk about it a lot off, off air, but like, you know how they have all these organized crime organizations and people get arrested and they get they get these like life sentences. Yeah. Uh, I think what's the age at which a game banger stops game banging? Because you know, there's an age when you get old and tired. When they die, and you don't, you don't. No, no. There's Sorry, like, sometimes you get out of it. You get out of it because you just get. Yeah. Well, some of them, sometimes you get out of it because you just can't fucking do it anymore. Like you can't expect a, a sixty-year-old to go break into a house and outrun cops. That's a young man's like illegal activity. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not seeing sixty-year-old, like sixty-five-year-olds breaking into people's houses and running away. From I feel like you either get let go or you move up or you die. I think it's the the same analogy as like the not to rag on anyone. But like the people who are like sixty years old still working the fry at McDonald's, right? Like, you, you never, you never upgraded, right? I'm saying like because 
You, know, you, you, never, you never graduated like washing lettuce. Right, like what if you were really good at working people over like in a portion, but you get no... Yeah. Like, like you can still do it at 50 a little bit, man, because you had that like burst of old man strength, but now you're 60, you're not just old. Right, I feel like you just get moved up. What if you don't? No, no you don't. Maybe not, maybe not moved up, but like moved sideways. Yeah. So that way like you're still, you're still part of the organization, but they're, they're repurposing you to do something else because what you were originally picked yeah. up for... You just can't do it. You can't do it. But that's what I mean by move up. It, like that's why I think it's move up because there is always a new generation. Of, there are there'll always be a new generation of hench. Yeah. So like somebody needs to learn how to do this shit. Are you yeah. like the hench guru? Where, like you're teaching the yeah, That's what I'm thinking. Is yeah, that you, you become, you become a teacher? Yeah, you're. Oh, that's that. done. Like hench you, coach. You, you had your apprentice. Like you're done. Those who cannot do. I mean, you're you're done then. But then like. So like that's what I'm saying. You're done. But you're, you're not done for, overall because there's always new dudes. No, but you've already trained your replacement. Someone's, he's going to train his replacement. Oh, so you're saying like, oh, so you, you've been in it long enough for them to be like, so I guess you just train more dudes as they get to that level. But you're done. Like, you're you know what I'm saying? Like, shit. you start off at the bottom, right? Your your du- your dummy hench don't know shit. You've been in the game for 25 years. And you're you now know, doing- but and you're still doing dumb shit. But in those 25 years, new niggas have showed up. So you teach those new guys, and then uh, that wave, uh, I guess a few, those who survive that wave <laughs> of new guys. <laughs> Then get moved up, and then you are still teaching. But the, now you got those like so you're sixty five. So yeah, you got forty five year olds that are teaching new ways. Right, they're teaching new so ways, like, but you still got twenty years, let's say, on those guys. So you can teach the guys who teach the new niggers. But there's a limited experience of it because you never moved up. All you did was enforce. I'm yeah, but real. but if you're now teaching, then you're getting good at teaching, and yeah. so now like you're yeah. teaching yeah. new kids. Yeah, then, yeah. then you be an but what you teach you Bro, you're getting really convoluted to say that you want this to stay in the same place. <laughs> <laughs> like you're getting very convoluted. No, no, like, no, this is the thing. Like, yeah. what if you just couldn't teach? Like, irregardless, right? Because there's so, some people so that are eliminate good. any means for this person to advance. <laughs> yeah, this is what, exactly what I'm saying. Just like Nate, like Nate said, the guy who flips burgers, 65 year old at McDonald's. He can't train anybody else, and the people who he can train, like he's done. Yeah, but he's because it takes me fucking three months to train three fifteen-year-old guys to do what you gotta do. So I'm firing you. Right. This is the gang eventually because the gang doesn't have any loyalties for you because yeah. you were this low-level enforcer. So it sounds like you answered the question. Like you, so you, you just get, get let go. You right? Get let go. Yeah. So you retired yeah. hench. Right. So now that you retired hench, you've been well, sick. Question: because, Do you like? Do they just like let you go live whatever life you have left, or do they like pop a cap in your head? No, they might let you live because you, you get like you serve your purpose. You did what you needed to do. You might get killed though. Yeah, but there's a four hundred one k and a henching business, right? No, yeah, you either you don't you either, retire, yeah, to you either money or you didn't. But like, do whatever the fuck you need to do. Like, you don't know anything important enough for me to care. Right. I feel like I feel like the issue here too is that the dumb ones get killed. You know what I mean? You you would think, but what? I mean, what they're always the outlier. I'm saying, I mean, like, of course they're way. outlier. The dumb, but like the dumb ones get killed or they get put in jail. Because, like, the smart ones are the ones that continue, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's the same with, like, because, like, the dumb one, the dumb or the crazies are going to do it till the point that the, they, that something happens to them. The smart ones are going to be cognizant enough to know when to stop doing it or when to, what time to do it at. Right. The, now that they've survived, quote, unquote, that wave of evolution where everybody else got eliminated except a handful of them, then they are smart enough to continue on. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah, because the argument that I was bringing up mm-hmm. was the following. Let's say that you are a drug dealer. You get arrested for, like, whatever possession of whatever narcotic at whatever level, such that the federal government needs to give you a mandated, like, 25 years. And you're 30 years old. So now you get out of jail, you're 55 years old. They were say, the argument was that, like, let's say you get caught at, like, 40 years old. Yeah. And you get stopped with this mandatory 25 years old. Should you be given this mandatory, or should there be, like, an old age limit on, like, paid criminal activity... Because you're just too damn old to even do it. Like, no, because they have like 75 years off they're robbing people. Because they're getting the arrested. <laughs> you're you're having a squad of like 800, like 75 year old dudes out there robbing so people. So if, 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 if there's like an old age limit where like, get the fuck out of prison, you're too damn old. You're, if you're, that happens, you think there's going to be a spike in old people... <laughs> I don't, think so. <laughs> I don't think that. I don't happens. think that's how that works. They, I don't think that there's happens. gonna be old people on oxygen tanks and walkers crawling in your house like ants, stealing your shit. Bro, I don't think that. That so, psychology is too much. Yeah, you your well, body ain't built for that. Well, yeah. I mean, like you also have to take into consideration, like um, we're talking about like sixty, maybe even seventy year old people, like they're fossils. Um, 
<laughs> Not to no, the no, ages, no, like, no, 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 no. nowadays, but nowadays, though, like there are there are a lot of people who are that age who are still fit, who are still able to run. Well, Jack they're, Lions, they're active. Yeah, they're active, and I mean, like, I but mean, their body is weak. But ah. I mean, like, the time, the time, the time, no, no, think about this. Think about this. Think about this. You got nothing to do in prison except get jacked and bide your time. So by the time, even if you, even if you are old. Your body is still probably relatively in peak physical condition. For, it, it, for it the is. average American, it is. It is. It is muscle like muscle like for a seventy-five year old. But, yeah, yeah. For, for, for that age range, but like you are still able to do things. Like uh, I, I uh, worked a retail job a while back, and I met a couple who was. They were. Uh, I know the dude was at least like he was at least like seventy-two, and like he was running like he was doing marathons. I was like, how, how old are you again? Like <laughs> marathon, not, marathon mean, strain ain't, ain't the same as ass whooping strain, though. Yeah, but say this is the thing. Yeah, you may be in physical shape to run, but if your ass trips a little bit and you fall, like you may, you may be in physical shape, but the body is aged internally. Right, right, right. Like I think you fall one. down, you breaking that pill. Yeah, much of, muscle atrophy is real, yeah. no right. matter what age you're at. True, but I think we're and bone density as well. Like bone your bone density, density is yes. softened, so even though you got all this muscle packing around, right. Your bones may not be able to handle the muscle anymore. Right. Yeah, but the thing break. is, like your your body knows that, but if you haven't actually put it into practice and realized it yourself, your mind does not know that. Well, so, I'm saying you can you can have this guy like break into your house and sprint away. You're like, mm, I'll just cruise down on the bike because eventually he's gonna fall down. He's gonna wear out. I think you're overlooking one critical aspect. These elderly, let's call them elderly people, right. who are getting released from prison, who are now going into high level illegal activities, you don't think they're going to soup them people up with astronomical amounts of steroids and supplements? Because there are guys who are 75 who are yoked. Can we go ahead and skip a lot of this and say, who the fuck is hiring a 75-year-old hit, man? Right. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, we're, 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 well, yeah. well, no, 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 think about it. Well, you gotta, why would you? No, you, you got to invest these steroids. Yeah. steroids why cheap. would you? Because you can't get arrested. Well, no, no, no. Because they're expendable. That's why you would. Yeah, but so are grunts that are 17, right. 18 years myself. old. Yeah, but no, no, but those grunts that are 17, 18 still have a long lifespan of henching. Yeah, no, they theoretically <laughs> would, but they're expendable. Right. That's you the point. Go, yeah, I, 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 that's, what the, that's the whole point of henchmen, but, is that they are expendable. Yeah. But they don't have the henching experience that the 75-year-old... Maybe that 75-year-old yeah. used to be a sniper. You don't know. You're right. If you if you need a sniper, that's a different story. But if you that's need somebody... Yeah, but what you're specifically saying is shit that requires body muscle. Or well, like agility, uh, yeah, and agility. And I, I get where you're coming from. That I get the I get the logic of he's 75, so you could let him go in there. But the problem with this is that so is that prime physical 18 year old that wants action. Because you're dealing with a different. Because like people always think that like are like us at our age, we think that old just means atrophy, and that's it. Old is a change in mentality. Like you also, yeah, you also are a different person. And so you're not, you're not, you don't have you the same level of hunger. Yeah, like, you, so and yeah, your yeah. hormones are very different. You are not the same person. That's very true. And so an 18 year old, you can get it. Like that's that's why they're there. That's why you have 18 year olds in jail as opposed to 75 year olds because you can just get an 18 year old off the street and be like, do this shit for 500 dollars as opposed to old octogenarian. And right. Because like, the old guys gonna be like, well, look, man, if I fuck up. Right. I'm breaking bones or shit, I gotta pay. Bill. Like it's gotta be a thousand dollars. And you can fuck up. Yes. Right. And it's like, oh, I'm not paying you a thousand dollars. And what? And what? Eighty-year-old henchman, quote unquote, is gonna want to work for some forty-five or thirty-year-old dude. You know what I mean? Like, right. it's, it's weird enough when you're older than your boss. Imagine yeah. being twice or more than twice the age of your boss. If you've been henching your whole life, and that's all you know. You gotta keep henching, baby. I just don't know if the game needs you, is what I'm saying. <laughs> the game don't need <laughs> you, baby. The streets, the streets ain't asking for yeah, you, guys. Yeah, the streets all right, yeah. right, you did your time. Yeah, you did your work. Get out of here. Get out of here. Go back groceries. Because yeah, go do yeah, something else. Yeah, you cannot. There's no way, bro. Like, the, they, the streets are not do, asking for you. Um, but I do agree with you in the sense that if it's a specialty skill, let's say theoretical, like sniping or something like that, I can totally see you picking someone older because they probably have the necessary experience. Granted, I am no expert on guns. So I wouldn't necessarily know if that's even a good or bad thing. It's a but, good thing. Yeah, but I would say that like if you need a hired gun that's specifically for something like that, maybe. But everything else, you but can get a young the body for. Business even because you have lots of like ex Navy SEALs that don't have any jobs. Hiring why not get a veteran? You know what I mean? Like, but why, you have these yeah. guys that are in their prime. 
Like right. they were in their, they were been in the same program and they're in their fucking prime. Yeah, but you know, a, a veteran doesn't yeah. necessarily mean you're in your eighties either. A veteran could be a thirty year old. Well, yeah, I get so, yeah. that. But like, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm tripping. Because you get all these like ex Navy SEALs that don't have anywhere to go after they are finished whatever missions they were done. Yeah, why not? Become, and they still got the bug for like action. So what's the, what's the legality of becoming a isn't that where they end up mercenary? That's illegal. It is highly illegal. But I think that's what most of them are doing, though, right? They, like, a mercenary? Well, they no. Most of them do like regular jobs or like yeah. I mean, but they're like, like normal private jobs. security or something right? Like yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Then, like, Things that require skill. You yeah, know what something I mean? like, could actually. pop off, and they're like they're like overqualified for it. But right, 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 right. I guess we could side note on the fact that we treat veterans here like shit, but that's another argument entirely. Yeah, it's true. Yes, is <clears throat> sorry. Yes, it is illegal for a U.S. citizen to be a mercenary. There it is. Facts. Well, so what it says is, is an individual hired to take part in an armed conflict, not part of an army, but does it for money. Right. So basically, you're killing for money. Yeah, you're killing for yeah, the profit. Yeah. Instead of for sport. Right. Well, I guess if it's illegal at that point, you might as well let it ride. Because, I mean, you could renounce your citizenship too, right? It's still illegal. Internationally, it's illegal. Yeah. Is there a country? Is there a country out there that allows mercenaries? Russia. Maybe. Mexico. Mexico allows mercenaries. Might be. No, but like it happens. But it's yeah, but it's like it, it you can like, get out of it. Yeah. yeah okay. It's the whole content of like Africa. Like you, you get hired guns to do whatever the fuck you need to get done. <laughs> you have to ask them nicely though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you got a large enough people, you can you can establish a coup d'état. I'm, I'm assuming. Coup de grace? I don't know. But like, I'm assuming you've got enough dollar bills in your big account and you, 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 you can organize whatever you want. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> with, a pretty, with, a, with the big eyes. I figured that when someone slaps $20,000 in an American cold heart cash in front of your face, you're not going to say no. Right. <laughs> Nigga, I'll renounce that citizenship so quick. <laughs> Trump, too pale spin. <laughs> I'm out. Would you? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I would. Would you? If, uh, would you kill? Would you become a mercenary if the po- if the pay was right? I'm nah. too soft. Yeah, I think I'm too soft for that. Who would you? Killing? You would do it? Yeah, I could play for like five bucks, ten bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm too soft. I care too much. You care too much? Who am I killing? It'd be like insurgents or something like that. Mm. It wouldn't necessarily be like. It wouldn't be. Oh, put it this way. It wouldn't be like innocent people. Am I killing like bad people like Hitler and Stalin? Yeah, we'll say that. I'm not gonna talk about no, that. You're killing greens. He burns in the scene and tell them they can't green. be anything in me. Right. Like, You'll never be a good suicide bomber. Aw. Burst in What if you just see them in the camera and you can't distinguish what, what or who they are? And you just told a little many. I mean, at that point, what's the difference between blowing up with that and a Toys R Us? Well, well that's hard well, to distinguish. I'm asking you. Yeah, the whole Toys R Us already did. Well, say that, they're done. Facts. Like damn, blow up a block. Yeah, like they give you an He says they like, try to blow up a blockbuster. <laughs> yeah, self included. No, yeah. I think I would have to get. They still exist. There are a couple still out there. In Alaska. Yeah, I couldn't mm-hmm. do them. Like I said, I, I'm too soft. Or it's online. Actually, it's a part of like Showtime. Something like that. Some company owns Blockbuster. Now. We've diverged. <laughs> but go ahead, my bad. Yeah, we we fell off on another. Go ahead, though. Continue. Two forms. Did you do it? Hmm? What black market? Yeah. Yeah, see, I'm too soft. You'd see, be a mercenary? Yeah. All right. Well, would you have limits? Or like, like whoever. No, like no women and children? You know how the they look on that face you know says no. <laughs> I don't have limits. Yeah, like, like in the movies and TVs, no women and children. You rip the top off a grenade and put it in a baby carriage. <laughs> All right, that was too much? All right, that was a little much. That was a little much. That was Whoa. A little much. <laughs> that was a little much. Would you do that for a high price? No. <laughs> is, there, is there something in the baby carriage? No. Oh, yeah. No, I'm put, yes. Or no. It's a dog. A donkey? A dog. A dog? Would you no. Dog? Is a dog already dead? You wouldn't kill a dog for money? No. no. Why would you kill a dog? Who would the, who would the dog hurt? Do all oh, black people hate dogs? I wouldn't kill animals. Don't ever say that shit again. Yeah, <laughs> that's the truth me, old bro. I wouldn't kill an animal. White people like... think that black people hate <laughs> animals. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, I'm, I'm killing an animal. animal. It's because I'm going to eat it. Is it? Yeah. So you couldn't be paid any amount of money to kill a dog? No. No, like I said, any animal. I couldn't kill unless I'm physically going to go eat this animal. On that note, if you hit, you kill an animal with like, let's say an incendiary round or a grenade or a flamethrower, does it cook it instantly? Some of the meat's got to be cooked, right? Some parts of it probably cook instantly. They're probably charred. Yeah, it depends on like how the flame hits it. 
They're probably trying. And it's not a flame either. It's like a it, when a person throws fragments. Oh, it's not like hit with a magnetic. Oh, well, he said with a flamethrower. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I thought, well, he said a grenade. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I give you a range. Okay, yeah. well, yeah, a grenade like, is different. It's somewhere between grenade, pipe bomb, flamethrower. Yeah, that's like the cooking you DiGiorno pizza with a flamethrower. Yo. Oh wait, shit, that's fire. Literally, <laughs> literally. <laughs> That's actually uh, kind of cool. Back to the henchmen, they know. We should try that. Out. One of y'all brought up the Koopa Troopa argument at one point, which was hilarious. I don't remember what the specifics of that was. We might oh. save that one for another one, yeah. That's in the henchmen. Yeah, well, yeah, that is, that is definitely a henchman. Uh, so, no, no, no. So, me me and Elvin uh, had a productive day at work one day uh, a couple years back. Obviously. Where we, uh, we sat down and we discussed uh, how do you become... How do, how do Koopa Troopas, like, uh, like, apply for a job to be, like, a henchman, essentially... <laughs> Uh, for Bowser, and we we just walk through like the whole process of like a Koopa Troopa applying, and like what that resume would look like. Shiny green shell. Well, no, like I was just sitting at the end of the table like Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because you've got you've got uh, your Koopa Troopa has a bachelor and walking back and forth, <laughs> uh, following in the leader. Following the leader, walking back They're and certified forth. Certified following the leader. No, no, uh, they got a, yeah, certified and uh, following the leader. Um, but they have a uh, bachelor's of walking back and forth in 2D and then a master's in walking back and forth in 3D. Um, yeah, their hobbies include flying and bouncing and in perfect rhythm. <laughs> they can, they do now, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, it was like, I think the, what was it? Uh, the, can it was like, do, you ha- do you have any recommendations? It was like, yes, Lord Bowser himself. And that's that's really the only one you need, right? Works well with Goombas. <laughs> Works well with Goomba. <laughs> Has a strong dislike also, of they're, they're also always happy though. Yeah. Bowser's, like, is that because they're naturally happy, or is it because Bowser's just how Turtle looks? Is it? Yeah. I don't think Turtle ever look particularly happy. Well, no, like, yeah, well, that, like well, I mean, smile. think about it. Bowser has Bowser has essentially like an infinite income. So like, where's he get that income from? Still princesses. I mean, I guess. Yeah, what does he do to make this here money? Because he does have lots of castles. Dr. Bowser? He's a hitman. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I mean, like, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, like, maybe maybe uh, the Mushroom Kingdom is the only kingdom that has a Mario uh, that actually, like, comes to, like, thwart him. In all the- fairness, though, there is technically infinite money there. Because when you hit blocks, you get money out of them. So maybe in their world, you just keep hitting blocks and you get currency. But doesn't that result in like infinite inflation? Well, well, so that means that currency is worthless. It's literally worth. It's like Zimbabwe dollars. Like right. that shit is purposeless. So is the thing just because Bowser's so damn big, he just claims this is my house. This is must my be house. probably. So is my yeah. house. I mean, it is a turtle with spikes that breathes fire. That's the way. Maybe he was be there dead. before time. Roll up somewhere in my army. He's like, this shit's mine now. Like, okay, you got it. Yeah. What, yeah. What am I gonna do to stop? Yeah. You? I mean, if a fucking like nine foot tall fire breathing turtle showed up and was just like, I live here now. So, okay. Yeah, you do. That's my, 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 <laughs> you're right. <laughs> That's my pizza. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you're right. Hmm. But yeah, no, it was, it was just a stupid, like, hinge conversation that, that we, we were killing time with running down the clock. Have we talked about what we would do if we ever got to prison on this podcast? Oh, not, not on the sure. podcast. We have this, this is a good, like, lead in from henchmen. We have in real life, but we have not in this podcast. Right. I know what yours is, and it is terrifying. Okay, so... <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let you fire it off. Yeah, not that we would ever get into prison, but if we were to not get into prison... Would. Right. The thing is, you know how they say, like, what are you supposed to do? Because I'm not about to get ash raped. That's not on my yeah, okay, You don't want to get ash raped. Well, that's not, not going to fucking happen in my timeline. <laughs> not in this Eddie's timeline. <laughs> There's a mystery Eddie out there, so we're like, come on, man. Something <laughs> he's like, come on, come man. on, man. Was so, that not enough? God. Yeah. All right, Sanchez, so tell, tell the people what your move is. The thing is, you know, after you get your colonoscopy at processing, that's it's terrifying because that happens. Uh, and it's like you get, I guess you get thrown into your cell, and then you have mess all time, lunchtime. I don't know how it works. But whenever you get this lunchtime, when you get, you and everybody else are sitting there, I'd make sure and like, I'll, I'll see how the waters are flowing. And whoever's starting to fuck with me, or before anyone fucks with me, I'm just gonna like, make some type of like, loud noise, or maybe like, I like turtles, or some statement. Some crazy ass statement. I like turtles. I'm getting my spoon, and I'm like, scooping out my right eye. And then I'm gonna eat. So no now one's fucking with me here today. So to, to that, I want to retort. You believe, honestly, that you have 
the aud- the stomach to scoop out and consume your right eye, but you do not have the ability to kill a dog. Mm. Well, no, I have the ability to kill a dog. I just choose not to. You think you can scoop out and eat your own right eye? Yeah. You you have because see, let's say the dog attacks me. You have the willpower. Because see, let's say a dog attacks me. I've always thought about this. If a dog attacks me, you know how they get like lock, like their jaw locks. I'd, uh, I'm like, hopefully, I can get it to like where they lock on my elbow. And then you scoop out its eye. Oh, no, then I'm going for their trachea. <laughs> I'm going straight for that throat, and I'm going to crush the throat because eventually the dog's going to suffocate and die. He's going to let go. Yeah, but you you think you have the willpower to forcefully remove your eyeball? Yes. That eyeball's getting out. Because like I said, I'm not getting that. See, here's here's a better question. Have you ever actually poked yourself hard in the eye? It hurts. A lot. Here's a better question. Well, yeah, when you close your eye, you're scooping it out. Why not? Why not find somebody that you know that you could take in a fight, like surveying the room, like not can, in there no, 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 but like and scoop oh, their eye out, and well, then consume. maybe I do that next. Maybe, maybe, still, maybe still you're what I'm missing. Yeah. Well, that's fine. You know, now, now you're like Peyton Sanchez. Well, that's fine. Like I said, maybe maybe initially before I scoop my eye out, I've surveyed and I've seen someone weaker, and then next go around I do that to them. So well, now why, why is that next go around? Yeah, why don't you start with them? Because you need to send a fucking message. That's not, not a message. <laughs> the dudes out there eating people's eyeballs isn't a message enough. Okay, well, again, how would you react if you see a guy do that to his own eye, and then you see him do it to someone else? How would I actually see him do it to someone else? That's enough. You give him the 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 kill bill of the eyeball. I'm Rip, just saying. Rips out Bell's eye? No, but I'm just saying, like, a person did that to themselves. Like, you're not, you're not, you know what? I'm gonna leave that guy alone. I think that would be sufficient if you ripped out someone else's eyeball and ate it. Yeah. Well, I'm making sure. It's and all of that, can, can you consume a human eyeball? Yeah, you probably just slip her down. She wouldn't swallow it. I don't think, because there's parts of the eyeball you can't eat, like the middle part, I don't think you can eat. Ah, yeah, the bio will take care of it. What? You'll break it down. You're getting into some ass in your stomach. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, like once you once you commit to to this is the idea of an eyeball, like you can't like pull out like oh man, like here's here's all of it, but there's this one part that I don't want. <laughs> so let me. Let yeah, me I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't eat these pieces. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, you gotta no, nah, you, you gotta commit to the whole thing. Yeah, because whatever I did, I already fucked up in life. You know, yeah, it'll make you sick. So you'll do it, but you're gonna have the shits later. That's fine. So you're, you're pooping eyeballs that later that night. Mm-hmm. Third eye vision. I think you gotta go with Elvin's initial reaction and give him the three shoe beating. <laughs> the three shoe beating? <laughs> like take your shoes and then take someone else's shoe and then beat them with their own shoe? Yes. Three assert, shoe beating. Assert dominance and dip out, man. I don't. I don't know. Are you joining the area of brotherhood? Because that's what you gotta do, right? You gotta the weird thing is, like, I, I don't like what they stand for. But I don't, I, don't, I don't know if I'd fit in because I like black people. I thought like they could sense it on me. <laughs> so they, they walk up and like, there's something astray here. Yeah. <laughs> like, I smell something about this. this He's one. got soul to him. <laughs> <laughs> I could smell he the black He can auto. dance on beat? So What's going on here? Something will smell right. Do me a favor and snap your fingers. Have you poured take it in the... He's got <laughs> rhythm. <laughs> Get him. Get him. Yeah, I mean... I think they're looking more for, I mean, Mike's at least got the blue eyes. Mm. I don't have any of that. You walk into jail, he leading the pack. What's <laughs> up? He got a neck tie. <laughs> That's the thing, like, I'm probably going to either get jumped in or have to get a swastika tattoo at some point. I don't know if I can do that. You can't do a swastika, you can't deal with having a swastika tattoo to avoid murder in jail? Once I get out of jail, I'm going to get murdered. Dude, what if we all went to prison? We wouldn't, we couldn't be friends. Nope. Yeah, we literally couldn't, yeah. No, yeah. they'd kill us. Yeah, we couldn't. We couldn't be friends. You, you'd have to join MS-13. I'd have to be an Aryan. No, nah, Eddie'd be the safest. I would join MS-13. I'd join the cartel. You'd be smuggling shit in your ass. Nah, join that cartel, and then hopefully get promoted. You like you do the taxes for the cartel. And <laughs> <laughs> you're like a cartel accountant. <laughs> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in the cartel. Uh, you'll excuse me while I pull the turbo tax. While I pull the turbo tax. Yeah. <laughs> it's a turbo tax. I'm educating them on finances. It's like, oh, we could get your money into the Damn. Oh, Eddie no. Look, Eddie look like the Dilbert of Mexican cartel. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's a joke. 
all that roasting you gave me two days ago, that's <laughs> your joke. <drill. laughs> but I'm working at the Mexican cartel, huh? You guys sitting over there doing gang activities? I'm just living the high life. The cartel? I don't know if you're living the high life. You crunch your numbers all day in the back. I think they got you in like a, uh, like a Chinese sweatshop with smoke in the room and no right. lights, and you're, like, you're smoking a cigarette with a visor, typing down numbers on the fucking typewriter. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they have you in the in the nice air conditioned room with a uh, three screen monitor. I'm pretty sure in the back with a old school pencil. Nate still. I don't know. I may be promoted. <laughs> I may be. I may be promoted pretty quickly because I'm taller than they are in general. True. Yeah, you're like Yao Mang for them. Yeah, you yeah. Yao they they the must be like you know what you could serve as a like they could probably get me under a training regiment. I'd be hitting the weight room. You know, from the accountant to the, uh, to the, uh, what's his name? Ivan Drago. Drago. <laughs> if he dies, he dies. <laughs> he started off as an accountant, so he's under the training regiment. He crunches numbers and bones. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and God. fuck with Sanchez. I roll up with, like, a briefcase, but, like, my sleeves are like, yeah, sleeves cut off with a shirt. Rip I'm on my dress shirt, dude. I'm yeah. on my dress shirt. <laughs> <laughs> and he sits down with big ass so arms and starts typing stuff out. Like, you're late on your payments this week. <laughs> the IRS of prison. As I go over to the yard and lift weights with like dress shoes and shit, somehow that's my like, thing. <laughs> <laughs> got all the dress shoes and long pass in jail, bro. Doing curls. Yeah, even the guards like, who mans is this? <laughs> he brings in his briefcase that has three legal notepads and a box cutter. The guards look grossed out. <laughs> Like, what is that? I'm what uncomfortable. Like, what's going on? What the hell is going on? Did the warden get in the gate? <laughs> Oh no. Oh, so where did he get a suit? Yeah, how did that get a <laughs> Who butt smuggled a suit in for him? Oh my gosh. I, I got th- some gators on in a three piece. And a tie. And he's doing bench press in the yard. <laughs> not, not an ounce of sweat on the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> what is this man? He is the most interesting man in the world. <laughs> Smuggle the suit into jail. <laughs> Go over to the water pump, but when I get to it, it starts pouring out tequila. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> my man got a suit in prison talking about I like to make a good impression. <laughs> Hello, warden. Nigga, <laughs> <laughs> a suit and tie. He's, he's wearing a three piece suit, but he still has that cholo toboggan on where it covers his eyes. No, he got the, he got the whole suit top with the, uh, with the uh, coattails. <laughs> <laughs> you got on the cat that top hat <laughs> top and the sleeves ripped off, looking like a Jack Mexican Abe Lincoln. He's wearing dicky shorts. He, oh, oh my god. <laughs> with a long sock. With a long sock. Talk about, not getting, talk about not getting messed with in prison. <laughs> no. Yeah. Uh, upper half like Taco put on the Ritz, lower half LA Cholo. Leave that dude the hell alone. <laughs> He got on shorts and dress pants. Dude, I dress people shoes. would look and they'd let them like dress however they wanted in prison. That'd be a nightmare. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how people would look in there. It would look like Midtown at a dance club. Just the weirdest combination. It would be a weird combination, yeah. It'd be like, it'd be like Euro Trash Night, that one time we went downtown, that was, yeah, it'd be like that. People were wearing like angel wings and like sun visors with like tank tops. And then suit pants. Uh, anybody got anything else? No. I I've never really given the thoughts to what I would do if I was in prison. The question is, do you go and try and stay in gin pop, or do you bust someone's skull open first day and try and last in solitary so you don't get butt fucked? Because yeah, solitary, solitary, solitary is another type of hell. I hear that's yeah really bad because you need to be so. Uh, I'd go for that. I go to like I'd fight somebody, risk getting the shiv. Because if I die, at least I die. I don't have to get in that strange. So what's worse, the, the potential butt ripping of the Aryans or solitary confinement? That's the best question you'd answer for yourself. <laughs> and on that note, people, it's <laughs> <laughs> been another episode of the Pumpernickel Podcast. Pumpernickel, Pumpernickel. Y'all have a good night. Make sure yeah. to follow us on Twitter at Pumpernickel Pod. Oh, yeah. YouTube. YouTube as well. Political podcast. If you're listening to this, hopefully it's on YouTube. Otherwise, I want to know how you got this video. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Honest question. If you if you found this somewhere other than YouTube, please email us at podcast at gmail. So we can sue them and finally come up. There we go. Yeah, it is. On the come up. On the also, come up. we're a little flattered that someone decided to pirate our, our podcast. I'd be flattered as I sued. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, we're still suing, but... Now cut the check. <laughs> now <I'm flattered. laughs> So you pirated someone with nine followers? Right. You could have just taken it. That's it, y'all. <laughs> 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 <laughs>